From the moment the sun comes up over Beach Mountain or the Lonely Ground to the north, you can hear him. Ray Hicks is a yarn spinner with a singular way of talking. I know I'm odd. And I ain't been trained, I just well learnt to talk. It's my grandfather's no doubt who have got back to. He can make a tail of shell. From his grandfather, Ray Hicks has inherited one of the oldest mountain dialects in the country. His people were Scots-Irish. They were storytellers, and Ray echoes their sound. Well, I was coming out there as a dating a girl, a walk into that area lie or anything. It was feeling my way. But his people were also farmers. From them, Ray not only inherited a way of speaking, but a way of thinking and feeling, a passion for the good earth. Now, the way people used to work is hard of a summertime in clearing new ground in the spring. But when winter come, they'd get the rest and they'd get fast, eating that dried fruit and all that stuff that they dry. But now they'd fall off of working hard and having to grub all that and hoe with a hoe and dig their ground up, didn't have nothing to plow with. And that's why they cleared all this ground up. I hope clear the last new ground. Why they cleared so many new ground is because they had nothing to plow with. The new ground, you just plant it. Dig holes and lay off of the hole and plant it. And gosh, if it's that lonely ground in this country, the northwest ground, sugar tree ground, it would grow, uh, it would grow corn then with no fertile. Fertilizer. Fertilizer. Yeah, didn't know nothing about no fertile. Ground was fertile and plant it in corn that made two and three years to stalk and them cornfield beans run of it and pick a peck to the heel. Peck to the heel. A peck to the heel, that's 15 pounds. And the second year, you really got a yield. The second year of it. The first year broke it in, rotted it out. And then the second year, you planted ash potatoes in. Third, you tend it to the third year, and you get back the third year about what you made the first year, and then they throw the out. Well, that's what happened. The storms washed it all off down in the van, the topsoil. Well, it went off, and directly Mama says, Ray, I believe God's killed the ground. It went on, nothing wouldn't germinate to come up hardly, it'd rot in the ground, the seed would. Three years and it's gone, and that's what caused it the uh, way I worked here to build it back up and all the other people on their land. That piece of ground right out there, it wouldn't sprout a pea. They thought ground was all you needed, just call it dirt. They didn't know it had no fungus of richness to, of the top soil that God created to grow the food. They just thought plenty anywhere. And they finally got to planting is the reason we start so and the people now learn it. Uh, finally got the plant and said plant it where it wouldn't grow weeds. God poor ground won't grow weeds, it won't grow no food. God. Yeah, my dad got to do in there. Said plant it where it wouldn't have to hold it. And it wouldn't even come up. Corn would rot in the grain. And so I've been there, I went back to what I knowed and what just got back to it, just got to study. Now, now I raised right up here a patch last three years of Irish potatoes without any fertile. And gosh, turnips was that big, a setting blue on top of the grain. Pick. 